Magandang araw po sa lahat. Nais nice ko po kayong i-welcome sa ikalawang araw po ng ating Area 8 Voice of Youth na may pinamagat ang PM Scent, Pag-asa mula sa may kapal. Ako po si Erika Cordial Guanco mula originally from Marikina Church and ako po ay naging area president noong 2013. Ako po ay lubos na nagagalak na ako po ay ngayon narito sa harapan ninyo, sa screen ninyo upang magbahagi po ng aking mensahe tungkol po sa ating topic para sa gabi nito. Bago po tayo magsimula, nais ko pong anayahan kayo na samahan po ako sa isang panalangin. Ama namin Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat, Panginoon, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyo na kami po ay nandito ngayon. Handang makinig po sa inyong salita. Nabagamat po merong pandemic at maraming bagay ang naging hadlang upang kami magtipon-tipon kayo po ay nagbigay ng paraan upang kami manatiling magpapuri sa inyo at makinig na inyong magandang balita. Ama, sa araw na ito, aking pong inihiling na samahan niyo po ako sa aking pag-share ng message. Ang inyong banan na espiritu na wapo ang bumalot sa akin at ang inyong mga salita ang mga sa aking mga bibig. Punuin niyo na wapo ang aming puso ng pag-ibig at ninisin kami sa mga pagkakasalang aming nagawa at gawin kami karapat dapat sa pagharap po namin sa inyo Panginoon. Maraming salamat, Ama, sa inyong dakilang pag-ibig, sa inyong pagliktas sa amin. Salamat po at po ang sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. So, I recently gave birth po 3 months ago, August 1, 2020, to a bouncing baby boy. And during my pregnancy, marami po akong kinakatakutan. Kung kompleto po ba yung daliri niya, yung binti po niya, yung arms na kung kompleto po ba kung tumitibok po ba yung puso niya, kung kompleto yung mga organs niya, kung fully formed yung baga niya. And praise the Lord naman po, ang aking anak ay lumabas na malusog. Pero one thing that really scared me the most is knowing that I have to raise my child in the world we are living right now. Sa ngayon po kasi, very common ang hate, very common ang discrimination. Especially with the pandemic and the lockdowns and quarantines, marami tayong oras sa ating mga kamay. And with that, maraming oras ang mga tao na busisiin ang bawat mali, bawat kilos ng tao. At sa bawat pagkakamali, napakadali po na mag-propagate ng shame, ng hate, ng discrimination, it's a very common thing to publicly shame and bash someone. Instead of talking to that person, nagiging uso po ngayon yung screenshots, yung ginagawang pasikati natin to. And with that comes a whole lot of comments na punong puno po ng galit. At natatakot po ako dahil naging madali, naging parang common, naging parang natural na natural na tayo o mga tao ay magpakita ng galit to publicly shame someone. And it really scares me na yun po yung kalalakihan na sistema ng aking anak. And aside from the public shaming and bashing, naging uso na rin po ang cancel culture. Wherein a person na maaring may maling ginawa or hindi kaayon yung opinion niya sa opinion ng nakararami ay ina-attack, pinuputak din ng mga hate comments to bring that person down. And this cancel culture ko goes way back. Kung maalala po natin yung kwento sa John 8, 1 to 12 wherein a story of a woman was, uh, this woman was publicly humiliated because she committed adultery. And yung mga Pharisees po was trying to push Jesus to cancel this woman. But what did Jesus do? Ano po bang ginawa ng ating Jesus dito sa babaeng to? He started to write something in the sand. And during that time po kasi, when a person is said to commit a crime, in this case adultery, Ang ginagawa po ay stone to death. Uh, aside from the humiliation, ini-execute po yung taong ito. So the Pharisees were really pushing Jesus to 
cancel this woman. But what did Jesus do? After writing po sa buhangin, ito po ang sinabi niya. He who, who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And lo and behold, wala po ni isa na nagbato dito sa babaeng ito. And Jesus was left alone with this woman. At ang ating His Panginoong Jesus, hindi siya nagpakita ng galit, ng muhi, ng pandidiri sa babaeng ito. Instead, sinulat ng Panginoon ng mga kasalanan ng babaeng ito sa buhangin, pinatawad siya, at sinabi sa kanya, Go and sin no more. Iyon po ang naging response ng Panginoon sa toxic cancel culture na nangyari nung panahon ng Pharisees. At some point in our lives, maaring tayo yung babae na pinapublicly hate. Maaring nagkaroon ng pagkakataon sa buhay natin na maraming nagalit sa atin dahil tayo nagkamali. Maaari rin naman na tayo yung Pharisee na pinupush natin na mag-cancel na isang tao just because his opinion is different from us or nagkasala siya sa atin. But as followers of Jesus Christ, we must follow how He responded, how He reacted. And He always responds with love. This love is so powerful, it is so immense, napaka makapangyarihan ng pag-ibig na ito. Ang pag-ibig ng Diyos ay walang pinipili at walang tinatangi. It transcends all hate and discrimination. And as His disciples, as people na naka-experience ng pag-ibig ng Panginoon, we should respond that same way, extending the love of God to the people na nagkamali sa atin. Ganun din na kung tayo yung pinapublicly shame, pinapublicly hate, Always remember that God loves you. That there is no amount of sin or mistake that will make the Lord stop loving you. Ano po ba yung sinasabi sa Bible about God's love? Paano po ba natin i-describe yung pag-ibig ng Panginoon? Actually, it's really hard. It is impossible na mabuos sa mga salita, sa sentences, kung gaano kalawa ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon. But let's try. God's love is eternally wide. Ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon po, gaya ng nasa children's nursery song, Jesus Loves the Little Children. Paborito ko siya kinakanta sa ano ko yan. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Wala pong pinipili ang Panginoon whether race, culture, gender, ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon ay pantay-pantay sa kanyang mga nilikha. Sabi po sa 1 Samuel 16.7, The Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And as followers of Jesus Christ, ganun din po dapat yung una nating makita sa tao, yung puso po niya. Next, God's love is eternally long. Mula po nung panahon ni Adam at ni Eva hanggang sa ngayon, ang pang-ibig ng Panginoon ay hindi nagbabago. His love is still manifested today. Nung nag-commit po ng sin si Adam and Eve, Binihisan po ito ng Panginoon. Binihisan sila ng Panginoon para hindi po sila kailanman maging hindi uh, sila mahiya sa kanilang nakedness. Binihisan sila ng Diyos. Dahil mahal sila ng Panginoon na ayaw ng Diyos na nakikita niyang nasasaktan tayo. And this love who, which was given to Adam and Eve is still being given today. Ilang beses na po ba tayong nalugmok sa araw-araw? Ako po, ilang beses na po ba akong natisod, na 
nagkaroon ng mga maling decision sa buhay, but I can still feel God's love. Mula nung bata ako hanggang ngayon na may anak na ako. Araw-araw, yung pag-ibig ng Diyos, punong-puno, hindi po nababawasan. Tuloy-tuloy po yung pag-ibig niya sa atin. Mula nung maliit pa tayo, tayo bata at musmus pa lamang hanggang tumatanda tayo. God's love is eternally long at hindi po matatapos yung pag-ibig na yun. Knowing that God loves you this long, ano po yung nagpipigil sa'yo na magmahal ng kapwa mo? We love Him because He first loved us. And again, bilang tagapagsunod po tayo ng ating Diyos and we aspire to be like Him, we should love just like Him. We should serve just like Him. God's love is eternally deep. Yung pag-ibig po ng Panginoon reaches us even at our lowest. In our brokenness, Jesus met with us. In our brokenness, His love is our strength. Palagay niyo po ba yung mga nakakulong, sa maximum security yung mga nagkasala na hindi natin ma-imagine can they still be loved by God? well that's how deep God's love goes na even yung mga tao na look down by society, mahal sila ng Panginoon hinihintay lang niya na bumalik sila sa Kanya kapag Personally po kasi may pagkakataon na lugmok na lugmok ako. Pero one thing that keeps me up in the morning is I know that His mercies are new every morning. That His love will reach the deepest of my hearts, the deepest of my sins. His love will re renew me and refresh me. Yun po yung nagpapatuloy sa akin. God demonstrates His own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Nagkakasala tayo sa araw-araw, pero hindi bumihinto, hindi nababawasan yung pag-ibig ng Diyos sa atin. God's love is eternally high. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ, anak ng ating Panginoon, with all the comfort he has in heaven, angels surrounding him, pinili po niya na bumaba dito sa mundo, mamatay sa krus, upang tayo maligtas, upang malinis tayo sa ating mga pagkakasala. Pwedeng naman tayo yung maka-experience ng death, but he chose to die himself. The Lord gave His begotten Son for us. Even if that means na kailangan mamatay na anak niya. And Jesus Christ did this willingly. And this sacrifice is the greatest demonstration of love. At ayaw naman po natin sayangin ang sacrifice ng Panginoong ito. God's love is eternally high to the point that He sacrificed His Son to die in exchange of our sins. If that is not love, hindi ko na po alam kung ano po yung love. God is love. Yan po yung pagkatao ng Panginoon. He is love. There is no ounce of hate in His life. Every sacrifice He made, para po sa atin yun. He is the manifestation of perfect love. He is patient. He is kind. He does not envy. He does not boast. He is not irritable. He is not resentful. He does not rejoice at wrongdoings. He rejoices with the truth. He bears all things. He believes all things. Hopes all things and endures all things. God is love. Kung may pagkakataon sa buhay mo na feeling mo ikaw yung babae na pinapublicly shame, just remember that God loves you. And that love will transport you. If you feel that you are sometimes that Pharisee na 
there's an urge in you to publicly shame someone, remember that when you were in your lowest, when you were broken, God loved you and He still loves you. Na He died for you. And this is a challenge for us sa ating mga kabataan. Lagi akong nakatanong kasi me too, I'm a victim of um, hate and anger and bullying. How do I respond? Especially noon na napaka-hot-headed ko. And suddenly, naisip ko na hindi maganda. So, ano bang naging respond ko noong mga panahon na meron ko ma-attack sa akin personally? I just say to myself and I just share that to give them what they lack. Maybe that time they lack love. Wala silang pag-ibig na hawak sa oras na yon. Kaya sila puno ng galit. And instead na mag-respond ako ng galit sa kanila, I give them love. Not necessarily I hug them or kiss them in the cheeks. I pray for them. I understand I, I, I try to understand them. Sinusubukan ko intindihin sila. I just give them love. And I pray to the Lord that the, His love manifest sa akin, ma-share ko dun sa taong galit sa akin, and that love may transform him and renew him. Because there's nothing else I can do. And what else should I do? His love is powerful. God is love. God is powerful. It will transcend all hate and discrimination. So just give them what they lack. Give them love. Because that love will transform even the hardest hearts. That love will propagate, will burn sa puso ng bawat isa. It will warm the hearts of the coldest persons. As follower, as a follower of Jesus Christ, hindi madali na tanggapin yung hate, tanggapin yung galit. But as a follower, you strive every day to be like Him. And God is love. And He choose to love. And we must choose to love also. Yan po yung hamon sa atin. Sa mga panahon na nagigigil tayo na mag-hate. Remember that God is love. Pray to the Lord that, Lord, please remove all this anger and fill me with your love and allow me to respond with love. At sana yung pag-ibig na ma-share ko, ma-transform yung taong yun. Kung nararamdaman mo na ikaw yung kinagagalitan, kinamumuhian, lagi mo lamang din tandaan na ang pag-ibig ng Diyos ay laging nasa iyo pag-ibig ng Diyos ay hindi mawawala sa iyo. Tatanggapin mo lamang siya. Hindi siya napapagod na mahalin ka. Hindi siya titigil na mahalin ka. Simula nang siya'y namatay sa krus hanggang sa iyong pagkabuhay, hanggang sa araw-araw, pinipili ng Diyos na mahalin ka. At sana, when you experience this love, ang pag-ibig na ito ay babahagi mo naman sa tao. Sana po, yung mga nakarinig ng aking mensahe, ma-apply po natin ito. And let us allow younger generations. And ako, personally, sana ma-apply ko to para yung kalalakihang environment ng anak ko will be loving. Will be full of love, will be full of the Spirit of the Lord na hindi na ako matatak. Maraming salamat po sa pakikinig at sana po ay may natutunan po kayo sa akin. Maraming salamat po at thank you.